Special situations are one of the best ways of making money in the stock market. Irrespective of where, at what level the market is, special situations keep arising as there are thousands of company listed in, listed in the market. And irrespective of the market level, you get opportunities to invest and make money. And especially when such special situations arise in a micro cap or a small cap company, or even if it is a large cap, large cap but post demerger, if the demerged company is a micro cap company, then the opportunity size of making money becomes huge. So one such situation we are going to discuss in today's video. Another interest of people is investing in the startups. So in certain cases, some companies listed in the stock exchange start new ventures or new small MSME companies get listed in the stock exchange and they take up new ventures. So you also get opportunities to invest in startup businesses in the stock market. So this is also one of the interesting part of this company which we are going to analyze today. So it's a special situation plus it's a startup business. So today we are going to talk about a company called Max India. So this is a very popular brand in the healthcare space in India as we all know. And there are several businesses related to healthcare which this company is into. And one of their business which they have recently started is into the senior healthcare or the senior living. And this business they are doing under a company called Max India Limited. So let's get into the details and understand the business and the financials of this company Max India Limited. So before we begin, if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon. And if you are not a part of a telegram channel, do type my name on the telegram as you can see on the screen and join the telegram channel as we discuss daily market analysis every morning and lot of interesting news and views on the telegram channel. So let's get started. Max India Limited was formed in 2020. So what did this group do is they retained the assets related to the healthcare business in Max Healthcare Limited and they demerged the senior care business into another company and later they renamed that company called Max India Limited. So under Max India Limited, what is the vision of this group is they want to become or they want to create an entire ecosystem for senior care needs right from the senior staying facility, healthcare facilities, entire uh, ecosystem of all the services they want to provide under one company which is Max India Limited. So this company presently has four segments of business. The first segment is they are providing residences for seniors to stay. The second st segment is where they are forming care homes where seniors can stay and along with that they provide all the healthcare services to them. The third segment is the care at home where they provide diagnostics and other take care services at the convenience of their uh, seniors home itself. And the fourth is they manufacture the medical equipments and other things which the seniors require. So all these four segments of businesses they are doing under a single company which is Max India Limited. So as of now in this segment this is one of the first listed companies in India. So, so a direct comparison with other listed peers may not be possible. But under the unlisted space there are other companies doing these services as well. So starting with the management, the managing director of this company and the CEO is Mr. Rajit Mehta. So he was the former CEO of Max Healthcare and he was the founder member of Max India Insurance and he was very and he played an instrumental role in setting up of Max Life. He is a graduate in commerce and postgraduate in human resources. So as we have discussed, their business has four segments, residences for seniors, care homes, care at home and the medical equipment. So now we will discuss one by one in detail starting with the residences for seniors. They have started their first project in Dehradun which is called they, all these businesses they are doing under a brand name called Antara. So Antara Dehradun was their first project. In this they have constructed nearly 200 apartments and out of that already 93% of the units are sold. So this business they have started recently just about 2 to 3 years ago. So until now already 93% of the units are sold. If you can see from the chart the line is the number of units sold so it has almost reached 183 out of 200 and the collection in terms of crores is about 550 crores until now. Now what were the learnings from their Dehradun project and what, what changes are they bringing in their business model of residential construction we can discuss in this slide. So earlier their business was to build, buy the land, build the infrastructure, sell the infrastructure and also operate. Now they have decided to focus on their core competencies which is designing the infrastructure, selling the infrastructure and operating the infrastructure. They, want, they don't want to concentrate on acquiring the land and building for that they will partner with other companies. So what will happen they will focus more on their core operations and specializations and in turn this will become a asset light model. They also want to reduce the cost from a customer's point of view. Average apartment size which was earlier 3000 will be reduced to about 2000 going further and the average price will be about 
7000 rupees per square foot which was earlier about 12500 average per square foot maintenance charges earlier were about 50000 rupees a month they will now reduce it to about 12500 so by doing all these changes the cost of purchase as well as the cost of maintenance for their customers will become more affordable and they will be able to scale up their business more in a asset right manner earlier they used to do direct sales and now they want to take advantage of the various channels in the healthcare segment which they have developed over a period of time they have recently started the second community in noida which is antara noida and the phase one is completed with about 340 apartments out of this 340 278 apartments are already sold by the end of q1 fy23 and they have got collections of about 123 crores from this project already so 82 percent of the units are already sold and by march 2025 both the phases of this uh, project will be completely done. Out of these total sales, 52% were direct sales and 48% they have done through their channel partners. So these are the different activities which are involved in this first business which is residences for seniors. In this we start with the acquisition, then the architecture and design happens, construction happens, sales and marketing happen and the operations part. So as a project cost if you see, land acquisition constitutes about 25 to 40% of the project. Design and architecture constitute about 5 to 8 percent, construction constitutes about 35 to 50 percent, sales and marketing about 5 to 7 percent and operations are uh, uh, anyway charged from their customers. So out of this entire cost majorly you can observe that the land acquisition as well as the construction are the two maintain uh, two major expenditures. So both of these things will be done to their partners in the future and they will only focus on the design and architecture, sales and marketing and operations which is a minimum cost to them. So their total project management cost will go down to about just 10 to 12 percent and their and their IRR will shoot up to about 20 25 percent. So these are the learnings from their first Dehradun project and they will implement these in their future projects to increase their return ratios. So their next segment in the healthcare business of the senior healthcare business is about the care homes or the memory care homes. So, so under the care homes there are two categories uh, which they are constructing which is first is care homes and the second is memory care homes for a different kind of uh, people where they have memory related issues because those kind of people need special attention when compared to the other seniors. So in this segment they have already launched four care homes in Delhi NCR and about 90 beds are already running. In these care homes they offer different kinds of support services like the ambulatory services, the neurological services, aging related conditions. So in simple words whatever seniors need all kinds of support for uh, feeding them, for taking care of them, basic diagnostics, basic uh, health care, all kinds of support will be provided in their care homes. So they have already constructed 30 rooms in the care homes category which has about 37 beds and they are operating at about 25% occupancy and roughly 50% of them stay for short duration, 50% for a longer duration. In memory care homes they have started with uh, 40 rooms and they have about uh, 50 beds with 25% occupancy and in memory care 80% of the people stay for a longer period and 20% for a shorter time span. So in their care homes business what is the company observing is their interest, the interest of the customers in this business is growing. They are more curious to know about them and whoever gets to inquire about them most of them get converted into their customers. So roughly about 65 to 70 percent people who visit their care homes they get converted into their customers. Usually in this business if they attain roughly about 45 to 50 percent occupancy they break even and on top of it their operational efficiencies arise and the company is offering all these things at an economic value of about four to six thousand which includes the meals and basic support services of doctors and diagnostics. So in terms of bed days you can see in their care homes quarter on quarter you have seen a steady increase of about 2414 bed days in Q1 FI23. In terms of revenue it has gone up to about 132 lakhs in Q1 FI23. If we specifically talk about one of their project for understanding their business which is the Gurugram care home, their, uh, the revenue have uh, gone up to about 82 lakhs in Q1 FY23 and their occupancy in Q2 FY22 was just 45% and 45% itself they broke even and the recent quarter in Q1 FY23 it went up to about 52% and they generated a positive contribution of about 5% in this home. So per day pricing at this uh, Guru Gurham care home is about 4000 to 5000 per day. At present there are about 19 patients staying there and out of that 19, 12 were long stay patients. So at these kind of numbers itself they broke even and they have become contribution positive. So this is a good sign that their individual unit economics is working and the company can scale up from here. The third segment of their business is care at home 
where they provide the senior care services at the convenience of their patients or their customers at their homes itself. Since the group is already into the healthcare business through their various other companies, it is easier for them to provide uh, the hospital quality kind of expert services at the convenience of patients home. They have already catered to more than 10,000 satisfied customers under this business. At home, they can provide all these kinds of services like critical care, diagnostics, physiotherapy, nursing care. So all these basic requirements of all the seniors are fulfilled at their doorstep. Another new project which this company has launched under the care at home uh, service is they have equipped a bus with all kinds of checkup services to be taken to the doorstep of their patients. So in that bus itself, they can do all kinds of basic diagnostics and health checkups like the blood test, the treadmill test, doctor consultations, bone mineral density tests, x-rays. So all these kinds of things for which the seniors had to go all the way to the diagnostics, they have developed on wheels itself. The number of transactions which they have done earlier in Q1 FY22 were about 5,600. But the company believes that because of the COVID situation, about 3,500 were due to COVID. So about 2,000 were from non-COVID patients. So that 2,000 number has gone up to about 2,500 in Q1 FY23. However, compared to quarter on quarter, it has gone down from 3,300. In terms of revenues, it has gone up from about 97 lakhs to about 119 lakhs. But on quarter on quarter, it has gone down to 125 to 119 lakhs. In this company, as a business, you cannot see a steady increase in revenue in all the segments. As the company is still in a startup stage, they are doing different businesses and figuring out what can be the best, what they can provide to the customers and how their operation, operational activities can be run the best way. Now the fourth segment which is about their medical products, they are uh, doing under the same brand name which is Antara. They have a portfolio of about 1100 products in this segment and their brand Antara they are creating like a retail brand. So what is the advantage of selling these products? All the people who are staying with them or all the people who have purchased their residential uh, places or all the people to whom they are providing care at home services, they are their customers who use these kind of products. So it's a complementary business where this business can grow on the base customer base which they have created for the other businesses. The Medicare business revenues have gone up to about 72.9 lakhs in Q1 FY23 compared to about 40 lakhs in Q4 FY22. But earlier due to COVID, they had done about 140 lakhs in Q1 FY22. Now these are the products which they manufacture uh, these are few of the products which they manufacture in their Medcare uh, products range. The back and knee support, ankle and foot supports, the shoulder, wrist and elbow supports. Then they have the bathroom accessories, they have the wheelchairs, they have walking sticks, they have a lot of other things which seniors use. So broadly, these are the four business segments which they run under their senior care business. And the company or the group believes that this is a big mega trend in India. And they have caught this trend early, entered into this trend early. And since they provide an entire ecosystem, as you can see now, for, with all the services as well as products which the seniors need, they have an edge over the other companies which are operated, or which are operating in a fragmented way in this industry. Now, let's understand in brief how the industry is functioning. As of now, about 130 million senior citizens exist in India and which is about 8% of the population. The life expectancy is expected to go up from about 67 years to about 75 to 76 years in 2050. So as people have higher life expectancy, this market size will grow. By 2025, the population of 60 years and above in India will be over 175 million. And this market is expected to grow at a CAGR of about 8.5%. The group estimates that the demand for the senior living units in India is about 2,40,000 units as of now and there exists only about 20,000 units. So there is a huge gap in the demand and supply in this market and they can capture this market and fulfill this gap. A majority of this uh, units which we are talking about are mainly in the southern part of the country. So a lot of people who want to retire and settle down at this age and need special care generally choose one of these cities like Hyderabad, Chennai, Punducherry, Bangalore to stay and uh, to retire and stay in these kind of units. So now they will develop this across the other geographies in India. Now from this slide, you can understand the senior living housing unit demand in India, the dark uh, maroon or the wine color is the highest demand areas. 
as well as the dark green color so you can see it is mainly in the west and the north and central indian region another trend which this company is trying to capture is the home health care it is observed that people are more comfortable getting well at home and going further as and when the technology develops better and better people will be treated more at home itself instead of going to the hospital the the basic facilities will be provided at home itself and this that's why this market is able to grow faster nowadays and it is expected to reach a size of about 21.3 billion dollars by 2027 growing at a cagr of 20% so getting at home getting well at home is better compared unless you have a very serious illness and it is cheaper when compared to the hospital also so these are the potential users and the market size of the care at home uh, market for the long stay memory care there could be a market size about 600 600 million usd for long stay non memory could be about 950 million usd so this kind of market size potential this business holds now talking about their uh, other segment which is the medical devices market this again is a huge market in india as india is the fourth largest market for this in the entire world not just because we are the highest populous country in the world but also because roughly about 8 to 10% of the population in india is the senior people and this trend is growing at a cagr of about 15% year on year at present this market size is about 11 billion dollars and this can grow to about 50 billion dollars by 2025 so this market is growing at a cagr of about 80 to 20% by 2025 and this includes all these products which this company manufactures like the mobility products the physiotherapy products respiratory products and all the others now these are the few trends which you observe in this industry in india the senior population is increasing the when compared to the number of people who need this kind of care you compare the ratio to the people who are available to give this care the ratio is drastically biased most compared to the people who need this care the number of service providers are very less the trend of nuclear families is increasing so these kind of care centers are required more the life expectancy of the seniors is rising so the senior population out of the total which is staying in india will increase so these kind of uh, trends create tailwinds for this business so what is the competitive edge of this company compared to the others the best the main thing is this company is creating an entire ecosystem for all the services and products which the seniors need although there are competitors as in listed as well as unlisted space existing and providing these kind of services but they are very fragmented and unorganized but at a sing, as a single brand providing everything which the seniors need in terms of uh, place to stay services as well as products this is the only company which is doing in india in terms of experience max group has experience in the healthcare business and they have a proven track record of insurance of healthcare hospitals so that kind of expertise they bring on to the table in terms of execution they have caught the trends early in the insurance and the health care space and they have been successful in those similarly they are claiming that they have caught the this trend of senior care early in this segment in terms of liquidity and strength of the balance sheet the company has sufficient funds to take care of the present business as well as the upcoming growth plans and in terms of leadership this company has already taken leadership in the home care segment in the delhi ncr region and slowly they want to expand to the other uh, regions and take leadership there as well in terms of growth outlook they plan to invest about 300 crores in this business in the next few years to grow all the four segments they want to scale up their number of beds to about 2000 beds in the next few years and they they are targeting a turnover of about 500 crores in the next 5 years in delhi ncr they are targeting a size of about 200 beds in the next few days they already have 60 beds in the pipeline which will take it to about 150 beds in h1 fy23 itself they want to promote their uh, medicare products on all the digital platforms and they want to project their brand antara as the white label brand for their residential vertical they have started from dehradun they have entered the delhi ncr region and the next few cities the company is targeting is bangalore and pune now what are the risks which the company faces or what are the risks as investors you should keep in mind when you are investing in this the business is in a startup stage they are not already profitable or they don't have good operational efficiencies as of now we are not sure whether the business model will work in india whether they will be able to scale up their business as they are expecting so there is a risk of execution there is competition from both organized and unorganized place although there is uh, no company doing everything together but still in a fragmented way there exists competition the company right now is not profitable so there is uh, always a risk of investing in uh, loss making companies the industry in the india is also still at a nascent stage 
so we are expecting that the industry will grow as we have seen the growth in western countries which may or may not happen in india and the business model of the company is still iterative they have been changing their business models as we have discussed in their residential business so there is a business model risk now coming to the numbers we will not have a long history of numbers and we have to see the basic numbers the last 2 3 years and try to judge whether the company will be able to take up their business and become profitable in the near term or not so comparing the last three years they did about 211 crores in fy20 and which went down to about 121 crores in fy21 and bounced back to 230 crores in fy22 so what happened in fy20 because of the covid the revenues were higher but they have already gone back to their pre covid revenues in fy22 which is a good sign in terms of ebita it is a loss making company as of now but going further very soon the company aims to be profitable as unit wise they have started seeing green shoots and a uh, few units have uh, become profitable at the unit level in terms of profit after tax in fy20 it shows profit but be- that is because of an exceptional item it is still the bottom line is still uh, as a loss making company the share capital is somewhere around 54 crores the company has recently done reduction is share capital which has have to which you have to keep in mind this reserves are strong they have about 580 crores of uh, reserves on the balance sheet in terms of borrowings their borrowings have gone down to about 61 crores because the liquidity position is strong and debt equity ratio is just about 0.1 crores it's kind of a net debt free company in terms of trade payables they are not high they are just about 10 crores fixed assets are about 150 crores on the balance sheet the company doesn't the company is not into any business where they have long receivables so the trade receivables are also very minimal in terms of cash they have about 30 crores on the balance sheet but they all, all also have other uh, liquid uh, assets operationally the cash flows are positive in fy21 and 22 the operating cash flows were about 73 crores and 66 crores and free cash flows are also positive in fy21 and fy22 which is about 60 crores the return ratios will be the return ratios will be negative as it is still a loss making company now let's look at the shareholding the promoters hold about 51% stake in the company the fii's hold about 7.5% so interestingly the fii's are already invested in the company and uh, public holds about 41% So these are the few competitors at the global and uh, the India level for the care home segment like Suvastas, Kovai Care, Oyo, and in home health care these are the few competitors globally as well as in India like like Portia Health Care, Health Care at Home. Now let's talk about the valuations. The market cap is somewhere around four hundred crores and presently the company is doing a revenue of about two thirty crores. So this kind of valuation may be justified. I wouldn't say it's exorbitantly high. but the company has to steadily maintain and grow these kind of revenues and in the next couple of years the company should get positive at ebita level as well as at the bottom line so once the business becomes sustainable these kind of valuations also will be justified but if at all the company is not able to build a sustainable business model then this valuations may prove to be wrong but as of now operating at about 1.5 to 1 two times uh, revenue the valuations are not that expensive If you look at the chart, the chart is steadily on the rise. Our post D merger, there was a, a breakdown on the chart, and from there we have seen a steady uptrend. So the best way to invest in these kind of companies is to gradually accumulate the shares, as and when you see development in their uh, quarterly results, and you see that the business model is working. So this is about Max India Limited. I hope you like the analysis. To summarize, let's discuss the thesis and the antithesis points. the company is into a business which is in a big mega trend in india and the company believes that they have caught the trend early the group is a well known group in india who has run successful businesses in this healthcare business earlier so that gives us a lot of comfort as investors the the brand is also well known among indians so the acceptability of max as a brand compared to the other newcomers will be higher the management who is running this business all the leaders are from the max group and they already have experience in the healthcare business and they are developing a complete ecosystem of all the products and services which other companies don't have for people who want to invest in startups this is one of the opportunities in terms of antithesis points the business model is still evolving we are not sure whether this model will work or the company will pivot to a different business model it's still a loss making company so you should keep that in mind there is a risk of execution whether they will be able to execute the business in a profitable manner or not whether their business model will be successful or not whether the business will be a sustainable business on their own or not in terms of competition there is competition both from listed and unlisted players but it in a fragmented way so keeping all these things in mind you should take a cautious decision for investing in this kind of a opportunity so th- that's about Max India Limited I hope you like the analysis if you 
like it hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and if you're not a part of a telegram channel search my name on the telegram and do join today if you want me to make videos on your favorite companies and special situations do comment the name in the comments below thank you for watching and have a wonderful day